द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह प्रेजिडेंट जो बाइडन की एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दे सौ तो वन हो गए इस मुल्क नवी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के पहले जोड़े सौ दिन उन्होंने एक आर्बिट्ररी नंबर के तहत देखा जाता है कि उन सौ दिन एक नवे प्रेजिडेंट की परफॉर्मेंस कहवे रही है और ये गल जज की जाती है कि वो जी परफॉर्मेंस है पहले सौ दिन की वो उन्हों एजेंडा फिक्स करती है फॉर रेस्ट ऑफ द फोर ईयरस इस करके उन सौ दिन की परफॉर्मेंस न देखना जानना इवैल्यूएट करना बहुत जरूरी है और अज उन सौ दिन बारे गल करते असी इनवाइट किया है डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी के एक राइजिंग स्टार एक यंग लीडर समय किंद्रा जी ने समय थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी असी तो दसीए समय किंद्रा बाल्टीमोर काउंटी सेंट्रल कमेटी के मैंबर है ये जी एग्जीक्यूटिव यंग डेमोक्रैट्स मैरीलैंड के एग्जीक्यूटिव बोर्ड के मैंबर है डायवर्सिटी से इंक्लूजन से पुलिस सिटीजन रिलेशन से ये काम करते हैं समय थैंक्स फॉर टेकिंग ऑफ द टाइम टू स्पीकिंग विद अस टुडे या थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी ऑलवेज ग्लैड टू बी हियर समय अज असी तुम्हारे गल करेंगे सानू तुम दसो कि प्रेजिडेंट बाइडन के पहले जोड़े सौ दिन उन्होंने की एकम्पलिशमेंट्स रही हैं कि उन्हों का लैजिस्लेटिव एजेंडा रहा है यू नो वेन प्रेजिडेंट बाइडन कैंपेन्ड ही गेव अस ए प्रोमिस दैट ही वुड यूनाइट एंड हील द कंट्री हाउ डू यू थिंक ही हैज डिलीवर्ड ऑन दैट प्रोमिस Yeah, so I think he has done all that he can deliver on that promise. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there's still some hesitancy, maybe, uh, from those on the other side to to reach across the table. But I certainly think Biden has done the job of extending his hand and and hoping to get a shake back. Uh, I think the you know when you talk about bringing people together and uniting people in that aspect, I think the biggest thing to look at is what he hasn't done, and what he hasn't done is really ignite any controversies. Uh, you know, you. I don't know about you, but I wake up every day, and I no longer have to check my phone to see what the 3 a.m. tweet was that you know sparked a controversy or alienated a group of people. And so I think the, him not doing that is, in fact, one of the biggest accomplishments and one of the biggest changes from the previous administration. And in terms of what he has done, I mean, you look at what he's what he's gotten through Congress and what he's proposing to do. It's all things that are that are really fundamental to to who we are as a country and to bettering us as 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 a nation and 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 I think that's fundamental to what he was talking about, which is that we have to work on lifting everybody up. Uh, we have to work. We have to come together and realize that we all have all have some issues to deal with, especially post COVID, and we have to work together to solve them. So we will see today on individual issues. But you know, uh, we agree, as you said, that we before we used to be in a state of shock all the time. That today, President's tweet has been taken, and you know uh, how it has affected the markets, our relations with our allies and our enemies, and you know uh, the dynamics within the country. We don't see those tweets anymore. You know, uh, uh, so much so that President Trump has been saying that the AJD president. presidency a a boring hai. so i don't know if he saw uh, presidency as some kind of a reality show which he thinks uh, you know this one is boring but main specifically tode to janna chahunga where do you see uh, a, a, a hand being forwarded by biden by partisanship the the tarap uh, what kind of efforts do you see you know president biden is the president who has taken more executive uh, who has given more executive orders uh, than uh, you know the first uh, the last three presidents put together so where where do you see that effort of bipartisanship coming for president biden when well, you look at how is i i first look at the most pressing issue facing us which is you know still the pandemic mm-hmm. and you look at his response to that uh, he has not wavered in treating every person in this country Uh, regardless of what place you come from in the country from what state you're from in the country he is trying to work to make sure that folks have access to the vaccines that folks are staying safe uh you know if you remember back uh to our old president uh you know he would he would you know threaten to withhold vaccines or you know play jokes about not giving vaccines to certain states or cities 
you know, and that only deepens the divide that, that we had going. But you see what President Biden's trying to do. And it genuinely is trying to heal the nation as a whole, uh, literally heal the nation uh, through vaccinations and, and beating back the pandemic. I think that's the biggest area we see that he, he is he is trying to be bipartisan. There, there is no there is no party when it comes to tackling a pandemic. It's not a partisan issue. We have to beat the pandemic. And so he's realized that and he's taken that on. I also think that you see in the legislation that he's putting forward, uh, you know, it, it upsets, you know it's bipartisan when you're upsetting both sides. And I can tell you that there are folks on the left uh, who don't think his agenda is progressive enough. Uh, and you obviously, there are always folks on the right that are gonna be disappointed, but there's also folks on the right who who have been supportive of measures like these for years and now have a president who's also supportive of them. And you talk about things like infrastructure uh, with, and, and jobs. And so I think that's where you see it. You see that he's not giving in to either one extreme. And he's working to find that middle ground, which is really what we were missing in, in the past four or five years. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we will take uh, uh, issues uh, uh, number wise, uh, one by one. So let's, let's talk about his COVID response. We understand that since uh, this administration has come into power, they have administered some 235 uh, million uh, vaccinations. The number was just 16 million under President Trump. And, uh, you know, when President Biden uh, came to power, he said in the first 100 days he would administer 100 million and he achieved that some 40 days before target. So he increased it to uh, 250 million. So uh, I, I, are you happy with the number of vaccinations? There is still a large number of country that remains unvaccinated. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, I think I think we have started reaching a pace of vaccination that folks didn't think would be possible, especially given where we were starting from, uh, you know, less than 100 days ago, 100 days ago, from where we picked up from there wasn't I don't think people thought 100 million was ambitious. And now we're here 200 million saying, wow, we barely broke a sweat. So, I mean, yeah, I, th I think we're doing great in terms of vaccination rollout. And again, I think that's a lot to do with his willingness to work uh, across the aisle, no matter what, you know, especially when it comes to states and working with states and, and local entities, he's willing to work with them, whether they're Democratic or Republican led. Uh, he understands the need to work with them closely and, and, and work with them to, to achieve this goal that we have in terms of. In terms of folks that still have to be vaccinated, you're 100 percent right. We are, you know, I, I think, as he said, I think Biden said in one of the few tweets that he did send out was that, you know, we're, we're approaching the end of the tunnel. You can see the light, but we're not there yet. Um, so, you know, you're right. We're not there. We have lots of work to do. Uh, and, you know, he just assembled a new team to look at how we can reach some of these more rural communities that have some of the lower vaccination rates, how we can change our messaging to make sure that they're comfortable with the vaccine. And so, yeah, we have work to do, but I think he recognizes that as well. And, you know, he's he's assembling the people that we need to, to get across the finish line. So there's a recent development which, uh, you know, people are uh, looking with some kind of skepticism. And uh, we don't know if it's, uh, 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 you know, prudent. CDC has come up with these recommendations that people who are vaccinated uh, might not need masks either outside or indoors. Right. And lots of people are saying that it was too early for this uh, recommendation. And, uh, you know, lots of, a lot of people are apprehensive. Uh, a lot of people are still uh, not vaccinated. So for those who are vaccinated, is it safe enough to uh, go around without masks? Some people are looking at uh, uh, it as uh, a political stance to show that there's wide improvement under President Biden. Some people are looking at uh, as a you know, stance by CDC to show that, you know, vaccination really helps. Uh, what's the difference if you're still vac you're vaccinated and you still have to wear a mask? So how do you look at that? Well, you know, Harjot, I'll start off by saying, you know, what, one of my personal philosophies is that when I don't, when I'm not an expert on something, I'm not going to fake it like I am. And uh, I'm in law school, I'm not in medical school. So as for the specifics about, uh, you know, the transmission and where we're at in terms of what the vaccine's preventing and not, the, the scientific background, I'm not an expert on that and, and nor would I pretend to be to, to give some advice. What I will say is, you know, I have personally been looking also very closely at what my local jurisdictions have been saying because they, you know what's happening near community uh, it differs right no matter where depending where you are in the country and so situations may be different uh, you know I, and I also understand people were apprehensive I mean you know I, I saw the I saw the release yesterday but when I went to the gym this morning I still have a mask on the whole time it just you know I guess it's a it's a something we've gotten used to and you're right there is a level of comfort um, in, in that right now and some people aren't comfortable taking the mask off others are 
And so I think we are at, we are at a crossroads where uh, it, it is hard to tell. Um, you know, I personally trust the scientists and, and what they're telling us. And so, uh, you know, I read the CDC report. I read some of what of some of what the scientists from the CDC are saying, and you know, they're very straightforward with with their findings. Uh, and so, I'm I'm inclined to believe, you know, what the scientists are telling us. Uh, but again, it, it's understandable when when people are still going to be apprehensive. Um, you know, I know I still am. Um, you know, hopefully I'll get over it. But yeah, it is. Yeah, I think we've all become accustomed to, to keeping that mask on us at all times. And when we don't see someone with it, we kind of question what's going on. Uh, so yeah, so you know, it, it's something to definitely consider and and know that we're moving in the right direction. But you are right to say that there is also reasonable apprehension from folks to to take it to heart uh, so quickly. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, generally speaking, I think majority of the country is happy with. Uh, what Biden has done in, in response to the COVID situation, the schools have reopened, and uh, you know he got particular uh, praise, I would say, for uh, uh, you know uh, using invoking the Defense Production Act, you know, which were used uh, for uh, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccinations. Something you know President Trump was condemned for not uh, invoking. So uh, on the whole, the country, more than 65% uh, of the country, I believe, is happy with what Biden has done in response to COVID. There are other areas where, you know, some people say that he has completely uh, toward the party line, even uh, taken a slight uh, turn to the left. Asi Uzbari Galgarange, ek choti ji break de baad. To see Vectero the way forward. The way forward is Tora Fertu Swagata, Matoda host Harjot Singh. Aj Asi Galkarea, President Joe Biden, the administration, the Pele Sodinadi. Aj Sardinal Mojudan, Skype the Rahi, Same Kendra. Jo ki ek young leader hage Democratic Party which. Same. You know, कई लोग बड़े इस वेले you know uh, skepticism नाल देखते पे situation नू कई लोग uh, President Biden नू FDR दे नाल compare करते पे and कई लोग ये कह रहे हैं कि भाई he is changing the country fundamentally काफी जोर हैगा एक left wing the progressive wing the Democratic Party which we you know who have uh, come up with agendas like uh, Green New Deal and all that. JD uh, Republican Party है इस वेले उसनू असी उस traditional conservative Republican Party दी तरह नहीं देख सकते जो कि ideology उपर जो कि सी basis दी उपर challenge करते सी ए एक cult like party इसले सामने नजर आ रही है President, uh, former President uh, Trump दे so uh, you know I, I don't know how serious to take the challenge from that wing of the party but generally speaking एक बहुत बड़ी एक्सपेंशन गवर्नमेंट दी सानू नजर आ रही है प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन दे अंडर एंड वी हैव टू सी व्हिच साइड यू नो व्हाट टर्न इज अ इज अ कंट्री टेकिंग जेड़ा ए 1.9 ट्रिलियन डॉलर दा कोविड रिलीफ अमेरिकन रेस्क्यू प्लान जेड़ा प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन लेके आए जेड़ा की पास हो गया है कांग्रेस व्हिच Give me is 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 that the need of the hour or do you see it as a as an you know huge expansion of the government something which which which, uh, which should worry us? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the government serves a purpose, uh, and that one of the purposes is to uh, deal with situations that are too large for any one you know small state or jurisdiction or individuals to handle, and that's what we found ourselves in with the pandemic. I mean, that that's a textbook example. Of a of a global problem that requires a large, varied response and and extremely large resources, and that's exactly what the national government, federal government, is set up to do. Uh, and so I think what we what we are seeing is is especially after you know uh, some time of of past four or five years where government was derided for you know it needs to be smaller and government's always bad. I think we're starting to see that folks, given the pandemic and what we've been through in the past year, realize now that there is a reason, there is a space uh, for government to fill up. There, there's a need for government. Uh, and so I think that's what you're seeing. And I mean, it, you, you mentioned FDR. Uh, the reason FDR and his policies are so popular was because after the, after the big recession, 
at the Depression, uh, people realized that, okay, there is a need for the federal government to help with, with the social security nets and with banking and regulations of that sort. So it is normal that we see that after large issues, large pandemics, large depressions, we see that the need for government is recognized once again, if it, you know, previously it sort of waned in the view of most people. And so I think it's something that we, I think, I think it's a natural flow of things, natural order of things to kind of have ebbs and flows. And I think we are reaching a point where uh, we're approaching that, that upper, that, that rise in, in sort of what government does and what it's viewed to be allowed to do. And so we'll see, uh, you know, I think there's large support generally, you know, of course, like you said, there's always going to be a part of the, the, the right that is just going to be opposed to it because uh, there's someone with a D next to their name in, in the White House. Uh, but I think that largely, you know, when you look at the average American, I think that I think they're happy with what's going on. And I think that they're much better off now than they were 100 days ago. Some uh, politics, which uh, never, uh, never waste a crisis. Right. So that, that, that's the question here. Government JD or restaurants new a rescue plan. Then the you know, we, we appreciate that. that that is much needed. But how about pushing their agenda of $15 an hour, the JD minimum wage hai hai. JD food stamps the unane around 15% jada uzech increase kar deta, right? Giving a moratorium uh, for uh, student loans. So wasn't that uh, the progressive agenda which has been incorporated into this $1.9 trillion bill ki JD sari cheeza jadi pending se gaya, you know, they, they have been brought in here. Don't you uh, see it like that? Well, well, here's what I'll say is that, you know, like, like you mentioned, you said don't waste a crisis. And I think when you when you strip that back, what that really means is that when you're in a situation like this, where the nation was shook to its core, we, we I mean, for, for a month or two, especially, we were at a complete standstill. This mm -hmm. nation was was down to its skeleton in terms of what it was. Mm -hmm. And when you when you break something down that much, you are, they, they, you're right, that there's an opportunity that we build back, we build back better. And I think that is the emphasis uh, that we see Biden placing on, on how we're coming out of this pandemic is it's not just about reaching the point that we were at, you know, last March. It's about being at a better point than we were last March. And a lot of these issues that you're mentioning, you know, you, you could label them as progressive, but I, I'd, I'd wager to say that a, a lot of them have broad, broad support, uh, aside from just, you know, the more progressive wing. In fact, people in the progressive wing probably don't think they're progressive enough. Uh, you know, so, so I, I think, I, I think it is, it is an opportunity and it's an opportunity to make sure that we come back better than we were before. And, you know, these issues that you're mentioning about student loan debt and, and the issue of minimum wage, uh, these are issues that were around before the pandemic. It's not that, you know, they were just brought, you know, pulled out of thin air as things to things to work on and things to things to find a solution to. Uh, they had always been in the background, but we just realized that now, since we have the ability to build back and, and really restructure who we are as a nation, these are some issues that, affect the everyday American, that affect the everyday person, and it's time to address them to make sure that when we are 100% back, when we're at the end of the tunnel, we're at a better spot than we were last month. Mm -hmm. But the question is, was this the best time uh, to you know, uh, address those issues as well? But uh, as we uh, you know, said before, no one wants to waste a crisis, right? Yeah, and I mean, and I, I think this is the best opportunity because, like I said, we we were down to our core, and so we're we're in the process of healing and building back. So, what better time than than now to sort of make sure that we're healed back as best as possible? But but some uh, the administration is being challenged, and and you know we we come from business communities, we see that you know we are small business owners, uh, most of the people around us. And we see that the workers are refusing to come back to work because they are getting unemployment and stimulus checks, which you know makes their income more than what they would get if they were working. So why, what incentive do they have to come to work, right? How, how do you see that? Yeah, well, well, well the, first off, the, you know, these stimulus checks aren't aren't permanent. They're not going to, you know, they're, they're not going to be around for you know 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you know, I, I do think that. Rather than looking at this as a negative issue, rather than looking at this as an issue of uh, people not wanting to come to work, I think this is giving us the chance to take a look back and see what were we paying these folks before, where now when they're receiving what's still a very meager ration from the government, what is making them still not go to work? And, that's, and, and when you look back at it, it's because these folks were not getting paid a living wage. These folks were working 40, 50 hours at minimum wage jobs with no benefits and still couldn't put food on the table. 
So rather than looking at this as an issue coming out of the pandemic, I think it's providing us opportunity to, to look back and, and see where we were failing. And I think one area where we were failing was uh, we were taking for granted that folks were just willing to work uh, for less than a living wage. And, and folks want to work and work, but work in, in, in a manner that's going to allow them to support their family and put food on the table. So, and so I think we have to, I think we can look at this as a broader challenge of, of how do we ensure that folks can work and have the ability to work and work for a living wage and, and not something that's still going to make them fight to have food on the table. Samir, what would you say if I say that uh, if you pay somebody uh, the amount they were making, even if, if it was a handsome amount, and they can get that amount without working eight hours or 10 hours a day sitting at home or sitting at the beach, they would prefer to sit at beach at home and uh, get the same kind of money. I don't think it's a living wage issue here. What do you, what well, do you say? You know, if, if you stretch, you, I think that's the other end of the spectrum. If you told me right now, you know, that you're going to pay me, you know, $100,000 a year to, and I can either work for it or go sit on a beach, you know, that that's a no-brainer. What, what I, but I don't think it's situ that's not that's not the equivalent situation. Folks that are getting money right now from, from the federal government, from state and local government, it, it's not some extravagant sum. And again, it's also not a permanent sum. Uh, it's a temporary sum as, as we get through the pandemic. And, and it's a balance. I mean, that, that it, it, we have, it, it comes down to a bit of a moral decision of do you think that if someone works 40 hours a week, uh, should, they, should that be all they have to work or should they possibly have to work more if, if the minimum wage is so low? And, you know, I think that's maybe we see some divergence. I think, you know, some of us on, on, on the left, uh, you know, that are Democrats, we, have, we take the moral stance that if, if, if someone's working 40, 50 hours a week, 60 hours sometimes, that should be enough to support them. That should be enough to support uh, the food that they need for, for their family. And so I think that's where we see it sort of as a balancing act. And, and we, have to, we have to find that right balance and it's a discussion. Uh, but this, I think this pandemic has given us the need, the, the opportunity to look at that and decide where that is. So, Samir, you know, when we look at the federal response, uh, we, we see that it's gonna have a huge impact at, at the very local level of economy, of communities, all, all communities. Now, ideologically, uh, that, that's something, you know, even the founders were not very fond of. You know, they want, they, you know, people like Jefferson said, I don't want a very energetic government. They didn't want uh, the federal government to have such a big uh, you know, impact on the, uh, you know, the most local officials, that's state-wise. Although uh, the times have changed, the you know the scenario has changed and uh, the federal government does impact but local economy the local government the local communities the federal government da kinna asar hai aur kinna asar hona chahida is bare assi gal karange ek choti ji break de baad tusi vekhte raho the way forward the way forward is toda phir to swagat hai main toda host harjot singh समय ब्रेक पर जा तो पेल असी गल शुरू की कि जो फैडरल गवर्नमेंट का कि इसका इम्पैक्ट है यू नो एट एट द लोकल लैवल एट लोकल कम्यूनिटीज लोकल बिजनेसिज हाउ डू यू सी दैट या सो आई थिंक इफ आई दम अप रो क्विक आई थिंक इट बी दैट द फैडरल गवर्नमेंट इज रेड सपोर्ट नॉट इन ट्रूड एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वर सी एवरीथिंग द गवर्नमेंट सन सो फार इज बिन सपोर्ट लोकल इकोनॉमी सपोर्ट लोकल कम्यूनिटीज but they're not in any way trying to intrude or, or take it over in any way. I think that's the perfect balance of what the federal government should be doing uh, at a really local level. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's uh, go to some uh, other issues, you know, which uh, President Trump uh, stated, uh, I'm sorry, President Biden stated that he would be addressing in the first 100 uh, days. And one very important issue is uh, immigration. Uh, कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव इमीग्रेशन बिल तो असी नहीं देखिया बट प्रेजिडेंट बाइडन ने कुछ इंपोर्टेंट स्टैप्स जेडे इमीग्रेशन में लेते हैं सानू तुम उन स्टैप्स बारे दस सकते हो uh yeah so you know i i know he's he's tried to resolve the issue that we're having at the southern border i think that's the most pressing crisis that he's trying to solve it's it you're right i mean immigration is a very nuanced problem i mean you no, have but, but how, very how how do you see that he has solved that problem it, illegal immigration has gone up uh, unaccompanied children number of children has gone up today there was a report that uh, those kids that, that were earlier in cages now they're sitting in buses for there 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 are instances where kids have been sitting in buses for four days so uh, where, where, where do you, how do you say that he's trying to solve those problems well 
you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, just, you know, tell a lie and say that the problem is solved, that's resolved. That is still an issue. It's a problem, and he's working on it. I mean, I, I do believe that we're in a better place now than we were, uh, you know, 100 days ago. I think, I, I, you know, I, I see, I see the apprehension. I, I understand. Why? Why? How? How? How do you say that we're in a better place if number of undocumented? Uh, be, it, it, there's been an increase of 400% of number of undocumented people crossing the border, right? The uh, unaccompanied uh, minors number has gone up. Your vice president, who was charged with that, has not even visited uh, the southern border still. So how do you say that uh, it's better than uh, it was 100 days back? In what pretext? Can you please explain? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the conditions in which you know we're, we're we're treating these folks and the way that we're looking at them. I mean, I, the biggest thing I think is that the president uh, and the vice president don't look at the people that are coming across the border down there as inherently horrible people who who have to be you know given you know treated under the worst circumstances. Uh, they understand that these folks that are coming across are dealing with horrible situations back home. A lot of them are fleeing violence or or fleeing fleeing terror or or fleeing great harm back home, and and they're coming here for a reason. And so I think that is a, that different perspective is the biggest shift that we've had. And I think that's reflective in how we're dealing with the issue down south. I think we it is still an issue and it's not solved. It's not, it's not close to being solved. There's a lot there's a lot Some, to do and the president has been perfect. Samir, let, let me ask you this, you know, uh, Democratic Party was they kya janda hai ki they want uh, open borders. Is is that something you are hinting at ki bhai problems hai we are here to solve everyone's problems? Yeah, so so I, I I you know I like to stray away from from extremes uh, okay. or from binaries. Uh, uh -huh. I don't think borders are open or closed. I you know I don't think that's the best way to define in either case. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that you know the uh, the Democrats generally are ones who are saying, oh yeah, open, you know completely open borders. Obviously, as a nation, you have to have borders. That is that you know if if we didn't have borders, there wouldn't be any any need for a map. I mean you know, but the, there there is there is a need to monitor them to some extent. There is a need to understand why folks are coming over. Mm -hmm. There is a need to understand that if we don't help some of these folks coming over, that's going to have worse effects down the line. And I think most importantly, if you look at it from 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 a really negative perspective, you don't realize the benefits that some of these folks have when they come over. I mean, when you look at some of the, you, we talk about the job shortage. One area where we had a big issue during the pandemic, uh, when folks weren't coming across the border, was farms across the Midwest uh, were, were were under uh, underworked, were underemployed. And there was concern about uh, food supply at the time because folks, the the migrant work that usually comes and helps with some of the, with some of that farming wasn't happening. Uh, especially in California, we saw that a lot. Uh, so you know, I, I think you have to look at it from from a nuanced perspective. It's not a yes or no thing. And I think when you see that, you realize that is why it is such a difficult issue that we're still working on. And is it going to be solved anytime soon? But I think we're definitely working on it more now than we were before. Do we expect a comprehensive immigration reform bill anytime soon? Given the makeup of the Senate, I, you know, I, I think that'd be tough because I know you have, the, the, you know, there's very, there's very nuanced and 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 deep beliefs on even within the Democratic Party of of what we believe immigration policy to be. I think that it's going to take some time uh, to first coalesce as a party around what exactly our immigration stance is, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know we still need you know Republican support to make it happen. Uh, so, you know, working on that and seeing how we do that, I don't think, you know, personally, I don't think it's happening, you know, in the next couple of months, maybe in a year or two, but a comprehensive immigration reform, especially one that I think, I think the sticking point for Democrats is that there's going to have to be some path to citizenship uh, or permanent status for, for people who come over. And I think that's the biggest sticking point that the Democrats are going to stick to. And I think until we don't get some leeway and, and some meeting in the middle from the other side on that, I, I, don't, I think it's going to be tough to get much of anything passed. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we stand, what we give President Biden credit for is, uh, you know, rescinding uh, the Muslim ban, President Trump's Muslim ban, giving some relief to uh, the DACA recipients, opening, uh, you know, uh, citizenship uh, for them. And then uh, uh, he has made some efforts uh, for re reuniting those, uh, you know, families. Uh, I don't know how successful is that effort uh, as of this stage, but um, I, I hope uh, uh, what you're saying is true, that they are uh, making those attempts, see seeing the humanity which might have lacked uh, in the previous administration. The other major area where, you know, we wanted action, when where we were promised action uh, is uh, climate change. 
We see that President Biden has re-entered the Paris climate uh, you know, accord. We see that that pipeline, uh, uh, Keystone Excel pipeline, uh, that, that has been canceled and some uh, new leases for, for oil and uh, uh, gas leasing on federal land has been suspended. How do you see President Biden's uh, role in this field? So far. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, the, the biggest change, the most necessary change is just uh, we now have someone in the White House who believes in climate change. I mean, that's the biggest step forward. Uh, we didn't have that before. And I think, you know, you saw him rejoin the pot, like you mentioned, he rejoined the accords because he believes it to be an issue. Is it solved? Absolutely not. Uh, I think climate change is an issue that is going to take years to solve. I think, unfortunately, we're past the point of where we can completely prohibit uh, the consequences from bearing down on us. I think now it's a mix of preparing for those consequences while also trying to, you know, slow down the issue and, and cut it back as much as we can. I think I think one of the biggest things that we see is that in his jobs plan for infrastructure, a big point of it, a big part of it is the green aspect, is making sure that, uh, that the way that we're building back and the way that we're restoring some of our nation's infrastructure is done in an in, in environmentally friendly manner. And I think that's, I think that is sort of a uh, Indigmatic of how we have to look at federal policy in general and sort of what the president is leaning towards, which is in every aspect of what the federal government does, we've got to start looking at the environmental impact, even at the local and state level. Uh, it's imperative that we start realizing that almost everything, every act, everything that we do uh, in government has some impact on the environment. And we just have to be very cognizant of, of what we're doing and realizing that we don't have time to kick the can down the road anymore. Um, we're already probably too far down that road. Uh, so I think that's really how he's helped most is to really just reframe it as a central issue that we have to contend with. So, so, you know, no one can deny that anything you do has an impact on, uh, you know, other things. And, uh, you know, climate being uh, one of the major primary. But do we need to club everything together? Is it not, you know, thirsting something under the throat? Where is that bipartisanship that, you know, uh, we were promised? Where is that, uh, you know, the goodwill bringing the country together? It, it just, it, it looks more like an agenda of the extreme uh, on the left side rather than reaching out uh, across the aisle. So, yeah, just, just sticking with the environmental thing, I don't think that the things that he's proposing that he's done are anywhere close to what the you know very progressive wing of the party has been touting or asking for. I do think it's somewhere in the middle. And what I will say about clumping together issues, I, I'm trust me when I say that I am one who believes that you get more done when you when you attack issues one at a time and you don't make a hundred issues into one because then you can't really solve any of them. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. are some issues that really aren't up for debate. Uh, they really aren't up for reaching across the aisle. You know, I put things in that category such as such as racism or sexism. And I think that we're seeing that environmental issues are starting to become part of that that cluster of, of issues that are no longer up for debate, right? We're no longer arguing, we, we shouldn't be, and we shouldn't even give credence to argument about environmental uh, climate change being real or fake or doesn't need to be addressed or not. It clearly that it is. There is maybe room for debate on what the best path forward is, how we balance um, sort of other competing uh, factors that may come up and, and how we address it. But I think I, I, I'm very confident and, and believe in, in saying that it is an issue that's no longer up for debate, uh, just like those other issues that we no longer even give credence to talking about or debating. I think it's it's among, it's become among those category of issues. And so when you talk about bipartisanship, I don't think there's much uh, there isn't much debate to have about bipartisanship in that regard. It's it's, it's an issue that we all deal with and doesn't ha doesn't follow along party lines. Mm -hmm. uh, कुछ और issues हैं जिस बारे असी गल करेंगे. ब्रेक दे उस पर तुम देखते रहो द वे फॉरवर्ड द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी गल कर रहे हैं डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी के मैंबर समय किंद्रा नाल समय यू नो जिथे कि प्रेजिडेंट ट्रंप की कई लोगों ने कई इशूज़ से कई उन्होंने यू नो एकमपलिशमेंट्स एंड फेलीयर्स से उन्हों की बुराई की है एक चीज़ जेडे लोग इस वेले कह रहे हैं जिसकी करके उन्होंने क्रैडिट दे रहे हैं वो ये कि उन्होंने टाइम कोई फ्लेयरअप मिडल ईस्ट में जिमें कि असी हमें देख रहे हैं ऐसा नहीं देखा गया कोई नवी लड़ाइया शुरू नहीं की गई 
ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਇਹ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਡੈਮੋਕ੍ਰੈਟਿਕ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਹੈ ਇਟ ਵਰਕਸ ਫॉर ਦ ਕਾਰਪੋਰੇਟਸ ਹਿਲਰੀ ਕਲਿੰਟਨ ਅਸਤੇ ਇਲਜ਼ਾਮ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਬਾਈਡਨ ਉਪਰ ਇਲਜ਼ਾਮ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਹਾਊ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਡ ਟੂ ਥਿਸ ਐਲੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਟ੍ਰੰਪ ਦੇ ਅੰਡਰ ਐਟ ਲੀਸਟ ਇਹ ਜੋ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਈਲ ਔਰ ਜਰੂਸਲਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਪਲਸਟੀਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੇ ਦੇਖੋ ਜੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ 3 ਮਹੀਨੇ ਹਲੀ ਹੋਏ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਏ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਲੜਾਈਆਂ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਵੀ ਬਾਰਡਰ ਤੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਆਰਮੀ ਖੜੀ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਸਭ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹਾਊ ਹਾਊ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਡ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਯੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਥੀਸ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਈਲ ਪਲਸਟਾਈਨ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਥੈਟਸ ਐਨ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਥੈਟ ਗੋਸ ਬੈਕ ਆਮ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਮਿਲੇਨੀਆ ਬਟ ਬਟ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਡਿਊਰਿੰਗ ਟਰੰਪਸ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਸੀ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਟ ਥੈਟਸ ਥੈਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਡਿਪਲੋਮੇਸੀ ਇਜ਼ Yeah but I, you know you're right but also I think that there's some issues that have no correlation to who's sitting in the White House. Are you sure? Uh, I think I I I mean I think I don't I, I think that no matter who you have in the White House are there, is there going to be tension and conflict in in the Israel Palestine region 100%. Is there going to be issue issues and tension along the India Pakistan border no matter who's in the White House 100%. I think that, that there's just some issues that are so regional and and so ingrained in that area uh that it doesn't i mean it doesn't much matter who's sitting in the white house and to some extent it shouldn't uh because some of those issues just simply aren't aren't what the us needs to get involved in uh you know i think we we've seen what's happened with with wars in the middle east over the past and my entire lifetime essentially of, of you know 20 plus years i i i think we're kind of tired of of, of seeing that the us has to be involved in every situation uh, at but, least militarily but, but, and i don't but think but tell me some some you know uh jared kushner on behalf of president trump was very actively involved in that area and the result uh, in front of us is that in those four years we didn't have those flare ups do you do you want to credit trump for anything there do you want to discredit uh, biden for that or do you think it's completely independent i you know again yeah i think i don't think there's any president uh, former or current to praise or 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 degrade uh, de- degrade for 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 what's happening or what didn't happen uh, i think what you're seeing is is conflicts flare up that have been around um that have deep rooted tensions that have been for decades and and centuries have been trying to resolve and unfortunately we just haven't been able to i think in these regions you see instabilities that um are are internal and they're not the us should not be involved in internal affairs of other nations and i think that's where you see a lot of these issues pop up from too and so you know i i i i'm i'm among the framework of thinking that it's these are independent issues that really uh, aren't affected by who's in the white house and frankly shouldn't be too affected uh, by who is in the so, white house so so some we uh, we heard america first from uh, president Tr- uh, trump where he said that america should not be involved in these issues and we have been hearing from the democrats that america has uh, you know uh, has to uh, rebuild that uh, leadership that you know it was it was lost in the last 4 years we have to provide that le- leadership to the world so so what what are you saying uh, we should be involved or we should not be involved i'm i'm confused with what you're saying i think I definitely think that America has a America has a a a role on the world stage. That is that I mean that's just one of the things that whether we want it or not we have it as 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 one of the you know world superpowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, how we how we wield that power and how we wield that role though I think is very different. Uh when you saw President Trump you saw him withdraw from a lot of the international agreements or national organizations you mentioned earlier the Paris Climate Accords. And I think that is where you really build credibility as a nation of someone who's actually going to work together uh, and not unilaterally in world affairs. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you're seeing the US try and build its credibility back up in is yes, we are going to be involved in the world stage. Like I said, given our 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 might and given our size and our economic prowess, we're going to be involved whether we want to or not, but we have to demonstrate to other nations that we're going to be working together. uh on these issues and we're going to not act unilaterally on these issues we're going to work together especially on larger scale issues like climate change that is truly a global issue you have to work together you the US can't solve it alone uh and they have to work with others so i think so, that's what you're seeing the, so the change on, from on an, on an issue like uh, israel and palestine by getting involved or by not getting involved So I I think I think look I think that violence in the Middle East has been going on for years I think especially in Israel and Palestine we've seen some horrendous violence over the past you know 20 30 years mm-hmm. I think that there is a role for the US government to play uh, I don't I'm not sure we've completely teased out what that is I do think that the answer though is not military uh, I think we've seen the, what happens when the US tries to interact in these in these domestic and and, and disputes uh internationally uh with with uh with military force 
the U.S. certainly can and should play a role in terms of diplomacy again uh, by, you know, building. We the first build our own credibility back, I think, after the first, past four or five years. But once we have that established, absolutely, I think you've seen the U.S. in the past try and resolve issues diplomatically uh, when they had the the stage to do so. And so I think part of what we have to do over the next couple of years is build back that stage for ourselves so that we can uh, be a peacemaker uh, in the world and, and help resolve some of these issues. How do you see? the first 100 years uh, Biden's foreign policy, uh, which way do you think it's leading? It's, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. And I think a big reason for that is because we have so much going on domestically right now. I mean, you look at pretty much all of our actions and all of the focus of the first 100 days have been internal, uh, dealing with the pandemic, uh, dealing with other tensions, dealing with building back, uh, dealing with vaccination. So I think it, it, it's hard to tell right now. Uh, exactly what uh, Biden's foreign policy stances are going to be. Um, you know, we know he brought in Anthony Blinken, who, you know, isn't isn't going to shake the barrel. Uh, you know, he's not going to rewrite the playbook. Um, so, you know, I don't think that we're in store for anything shocking in terms of what U.S. you know foreign policy looks like in, in the next couple of years. Uh, but I think the biggest thing that he has brought is stability and credibility. I mean, folks can look at look at Biden and look at the folks that he's brought in and, and trust that they're reasonable people that they can reach out to and work with. And I think that's the biggest difference that we've seen is just building back the credibility and respect um, from the past four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, he has brought us back into that uh, Iran nuclear deal and uh, put some sanctions uh, on Russia and expelled some Russian diplomats for their uh, involvement with the solar wind cyber uh, attacks. So uh, that brings some credibility. Uh, Another very contentious issue, and uh, one which might be, you know, one of the most contentious uh, issues uh, under President Trump, uh, were the social issues in this country. Uh, President Trump uh, tried to, you know, stroke these differences. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if he had those. Uh, you know, underlying uh, ideology or he was trying to appease somebody, things like uh, banning LGBTQ uh, uh, personals from serving in the army. So one of the first things President Biden did was rescinding uh, th that order. H how do you look at President Biden's uh, role uh, in, in social issues? Yeah, Look, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and say that, you know, racism is solved or that, you know, LGBTQ discrimination is no longer a thing. Those things exist. And and sadly, um, they were made larger issues in the past four years than they probably were before that. But they're still there and they're going to be there for a while. I think we have a long, long way to go as a nation uh, to truly grapple with these issues, you know, these social issues that you talk about. I think we're on the right path. You know, I, I think I think we're certainly better off now than we were 100 days ago in terms of how we're discussing some of these issues and 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 the progress that you made on some of these issues. Uh, we have a long way to go. No, so, um, some, some, I, I don't want that to be a talking point for you. I would uh, challenge you on that. Uh, you know, we were very hopeful under this uh, George Floyd climate that was uh, you know created in this country. Though President Biden has uh, supported that commission, you know there was a police reform commission that was expected uh, in the first 100 days that was promised but uh, president biden you know there's been a pivot and he has let it go to the congress that congress is going to do something can you tell us why president trump has uh, president biden has uh, you know chosen uh, not to address the issue yes i mean you know when it comes to when it comes to police reform i mean we were talking about previously about you know what issues aren't partisan and which ones are up for debate that is certainly one that has a lot of debate going on and and I don't think is is squarely decided in terms of what our the future of policing looks like in this country. I don't think it's even decided within parties, uh, within our own parties of what, what we want police reform and policing to look like in the future. Uh, what I will say is that while Biden may not have this at the forefront of his agenda at the moment, um, you know, there are local actions going on, especially, you know, I come from Maryland and Maryland passed great uh, police reform acts. Um, this past this past legislative session. And so I think that, you know, at times when there's issues like this, we you know, you mentioned what should the reach of federal government be? I think there are some issues like police reform that maybe are better addressed at the local and state levels mm. um, because every community is different. Every community's needs are different. And when you're talking about, uh, you know, one of the fundamental things that the Constitution gives to the states is the quote unquote police power, um, which, you know, isn't related directly to, to what we think of as police. But I think this is an area where, where that sort of rings true, where this is an issue that is so fundamental to states and, and to each and every community 
that it may just be an issue that has to be handled by every state, by every community on their own. And we may not get a federal response. And that may be for the best. Uh, so we'll just have to see. Samay, we thank you for addressing uh, these issues. You know, uh, it's, it's too early in the administration to judge, but this is an um, you know, arbitrary number said, 100 days, which uh, you know, they say reflect uh, what, what the agenda of the government uh, would be for the next four years. We really appreciate you breaking it down for us. You are a good spokesman for, for your party, for, your current, for the current administration. Thank you very much for coming here today. Thank you for having me. AC Sada Ajda Show, Jivanki Asikya, Ejede Pele So Dinan, a final Nisa Nudazdeki Koy administration ki karegi, So Dinan lay o president Nahibanin, but a ek acha scale hunda jistapa judge kardea, ki Ejedi administration now ugly charsal kin agendas no chukan lagi. Hali asi a crisis situation echa, asi COVID the situation who face kardepea. एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮੈਜੋਰਿਟੀ ਧਿਆਨ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਉਸ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਫੇਸ ਕਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਮੀਦ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਜੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਮਿਸਸ ਜੋ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਮੈਂਟਸ ਆਈਡੈਂਟੀਫਾਈ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈਆਂ ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਰਿਫਾਰਮ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਐਡਰੈਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਔਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਬਾਈਡਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਕੈਂਪੇਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਮਿਸਸ ਹਨ ਜੋ ਤੂੰ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹ ਜਿੱਤੂ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਗਲੇ 4 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੂਰਾ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਦੇਖਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬ